So hi, everybody. Uh, welcome back to some of our regulars like Joe, who's been on 80% of our webinars over the last four years, which is super fun. Call him a, a super fan. Um, and welcome to some of our new faces on the call. Um, my name is Jan Lehman. I'm the owner of CTC Productivity, and I have an amazing, amazingly talented team of experts in Microsoft 365. And they work on every facet of helping a company uh, leverage it to drive productivity. On the call today, we have Arnie and Nancy. Arnie's managing the door, the virtual door, and Nancy's going to be our um, speaker for the day. So uh, Nancy's a productivity consultant. She's what we call our app expert, which means she understands the ins and outs of all of the various apps that sit on top of Microsoft 365. Arnie is one of our business process improvement gurus. And uh, so he'll look at things from a business issue standpoint, a workflow issue, and how to design it on 365. And then we have a number of other team members that aren't with us today. So anyway, we've been doing these webinars for about four years. We tend to hit it uh, hard with content and then open it up for Q&A. At any point, if you have a question, feel free to enter it into chat. Um, and yeah, we're happy to circle around and get to those questions at the end, or we might answer them midway, depending on how meaty they are. Um, today, the topic is how to use OneNote effectively for tracking personal information. And mm -hmm. it's such an interesting thing trying to figure out what topics we should cover in these uh, webinars. So today we had 45 people sign up. So obviously there is a very strong interest to understand how to use OneNote. Uh, one of our highest watched um, webinars is one Nancy did, a, I think at this point, a couple of years ago on OneNote templates. So if you're interested in yet another version of OneNote, there's something about that particular webinar people like, because there's been a lot of dialogue around that. So go check it out. Um, next month, actually, we are now moved to an every other month. <clears throat> every other month is when we're doing the webinars. And so we're going to have Rafe back. Rafe is one of our, he leads our technical infrastructure team. And they are the ones that um, have, were involved in beta testing Copilot, and he'll be doing a session on Copilot. Copilot, if you don't know, is Microsoft's AI tool. What's really amazing and cool about Copilot, for all of you to be aware, is it, it certainly does everything that we're learning that AI does with chat GPT and all the different things. What's very different about Microsoft Copilot is it leverages your data. So it'll allow you to scrub your data, pull the information that you have within your Microsoft 365 environment and use it and then actually produce the results. And it doesn't share the results with the rest of the universe like most chat GPT is going to do. It keeps it private within your space. So it is becoming yet another <clears throat> secret weapon for Microsoft. And um, I got to be honest, increasing the demand for our services because companies were already trying to get rid of third-party applications to take advantage of the integration within 365. Now, with understanding that if you have your data all in in 365, you can use Copilot more fully, it's yet one more reason to be all in on 365. So super excited about that session coming up in May. Um, in chat, I'm going to enter a couple different links here for you. Um, Let's see. So a couple different links. So we've got um, sign up for, you can sign up for the May webinar. There's a link there. If you want to sign up for our YouTube channel, that's another way, good way to go. I'm going to sign up for our newsletter. Um, I'm going to be covering a case study in a couple minutes, and that's a link to the case study I'm going to cover. And there's a link to my book if you have an interest. So uh, awesome. All right. So I'm going to touch on a couple things and then hand it over to Nancy. So we basically help companies um, really solve some of the most pressing issues um, by using 365. And um, usually the issues that we'll hear from companies is they're having issues with communication or collaboration, accountability, lots of different things. When we hear any of these words, we know there's something in the Microsoft 365 suite of tools that they should be leveraging. So that, that gets our attention. Um, we are continuing to see very much of a mixed hybrid and remote workforce out there, which means definitely you want to be on 365. Um, you want to make it easier for your remote workers. Um, even if you have everybody all in the office, you want to start using 365 because you will have the person that, you know, needs to be out of the office because of a sick kid or lots of different things and being able to access everything on <laughs> everything on any device, it makes it really easy. So, um, so I'm going to talk about a case study that um, we just did with a client. So 
Uh, so the challenge for the client, this is always written from the client's perspective. So the, the challenge with the client is they had recently decided to roll out the EOS system, the entrepreneurial operating system. If you don't know what that is, please Google it and follow it. We are an EOS company. We run EOS. Lots of um, great reasons to follow it. They It provides a very macro um, um, organized way of running your business. And we do more micro level. So there's just great synergies between the two. But anyway, this company wanted to run EOS. It would be similar just to how do you run your goals and issues and priorities of a business. And they wanted to figure out what tools they should be using in order to implement this methodology. And so they were exploring a lot of different third-party applications that are out there. There's a lot of really great ones like 90IO and uh, Bloom and different ones that are all about specifically on how to run EOS in your business. <clears throat> So they were exploring that, but they realized for all the reasons I mentioned before, they didn't want an isolated platform. They were like, no, we want to be all in with Microsoft 365 for a variety of reasons. They wanted everything already integrated with the technology. They wanted it to be easy for people to adopt. So tools people were currently using, we'd like to just continue to build on that, like our Microsoft suite. So they knew for sure they wanted a Microsoft solution. <clears throat> So they reached out to us because they wanted to do, you know, find a client that would do it right or find a vendor that could do it right. They figured they could probably muddle their way through and figure out how to do it. Um, but our ideal clients are not do-it-yourselfers. They're ones that like see the opportunity. They know that their time is precious and they want to hire experts to actually do it. So they brought us in and um, we not only built out the EOS solution and Arnie is our EOS designer. He's on the call. He's amazing, along with Nance. And so um, we not only taught them, nope, nope, go back one more. <laughs> so not only did they, um, we build out the EOS solution, but but part of what we do is really help companies understand how, what the, what the long-term strategy is for Microsoft 365 and how to leverage it fully. So it was really a combination of not just helping them build out an EOS tool, but teach them the long-term strategy of how to use the, uh, the, the Teams environment. And so we agreed with them, let's let's do this project, but let's uh, pilot with your executive team. So your executive team at the tippy top of your company is, starts to understand this broader technical strategy. <clears throat> so the plan was two phases. One, build out a SharePoint solution to run EOS and then integrate EOS into the Teams environment so the leadership team can see how you're supposed to properly use the Microsoft Teams infrastructure. Um, the results from all that is they gained a ton of understanding <clears throat> along the way. They were super happy that we understand EOS. We're an EOS company. Arnie studied EOS inside and out. Um, as you all know, when you hire a technical person, often the biggest struggle is explaining what the heck your needs are. Um, so if the company already knows what, you know, what it is you're looking for, it makes it much easier to, to make sure that the build matches your expectation. Um, the clients, uh, Daisy and her company, were super happy to know that they could customize the tool any way they want. It's one advantage over buying an off-the-shelf piece of software. Um, and so they could, yeah, if they don't do anything, if they don't do EOS pure or run things um, in, a, in that sort of way, we could tweak it and do it differently. And again, because everything's on your device, you could access anything from anywhere, which is a great perk. Um, so the company had already been using to do in planner as a way of tracking tasks. And so when we roll out an EOS solution, we give options that you can actually build out the solution using planner and to do, or you can do it building SharePoint for you listing your rocks and issues and different things. So um, they definitely went down the route of using planner and to do, because again, people were already using that app, they, those apps, and they really liked it. Um, according to Daisy, having everything integrated within the Teams environment made it much more user friendly than just using a SharePoint site, made it easier for people to access just the stuff they needed. And um, the good news that came from it is um, we not only develop the system, but everybody in our team trains our end users to understand how to maintain and manage anything we build. And so they now had an, a much better idea of what all they could do with SharePoint on their own for additional um, projects and things. Uh, so, yep, so Arnie fully trained all the staff. We They've continued to expand their utilization of Teams now that they see how it's going to work and they're rolling it out in the company. And again, they're building out and leveraging SharePoint and SharePoint in a lot of different areas in the business. 
So we always provide a true ROI in the work we did. So the one-time cost to do all this was the $13.50, as you see on there. The good news was building something out within the 365 environment is there's no subscription fee. You're already paying for Microsoft. There's no ongoing fee for this um, application. And the ROI, typically we try to do a, a hard before and after number, but since they had never done EOS before, there was no before benchmark. Um, but they were just thrilled that the adoption of EOS uh, really has been very seamless and worked really well because they all have a really good tool that can help support the system. So nice work, Arnie, as always, excellent work. So there's lots of other case studies out there. This is just one of the ones we wanted to highlight in this session. And Nance, I think you're up. Awesome. All right, here we are. OneNote. I love OneNote. It's my favorite tool. I use it every day, multiple times a day. So uh, focus in the past has been more around business stuff. This is more personal, but it can be business as well. So I just want to give a top level, high level reminder of what is OneNote. OneNote is that digital notebook. So think of the binder, right, that you would have on the shelf. You open it up, it has all the tabs in it and underneath the tabs, all the pages. So you might have a binder that is um, processes. And so you pull it off the shelf and you go, oh, what process Flip to it? And then you have all the information there. It's taking all of that off of the shelf and putting it in the computer, uh, making it digital and electronic so that it's very easy to access. Uh, anybody on the team can update it so it can be updated just in time rather than, OK, we have 20 binders out there. Now we have to print this off and we have to get it to everybody to put in the 20 binders. It's one binder and it's done. Uh, so that's one of the things that I absolutely love about it. And there is that collaborative that you can let everybody in the team go ahead and update it and add information to it so that it's not the sole responsibility of just one person on the team or in the organization to keep that OneNote notebook updated. Jan mentioned it already, but I always like to come back and, and bring up that you can access it anywhere from any device. So you can go to the web and access it. Um, you can access OneNote from your PC. And thank goodness, I think hopefully everybody uh, no longer has the Windows 10 OneNote on there. They used to have two versions of it. And especially if people are now in Windows 11, the Windows 10 OneNote is gone. If you do, I recommend not using that and uh, find the other OneNote app on your Windows PC. Uh, and I should have, I can't take a screenshot of it, but uh, OneNote is also available on Mac. So if you are using a Mac, it is available as an app as well. And that is uh, my, uh, my uh, Android phone. You can go ahead and you can download the OneNote app so that you have access to it on the phone. And one of the ones, I'm going to show you a whole bunch of different things. One of the tabs that I have uh, in a section or one of the sections I have in my notebook is travel. And so when I travel, I make sure that all my car reservations, my hotel, my flight, all that information is in my OneNote notebook and that I have made sure that it is synchronized and up to date on my phone so that I'm not trying to get it syncing uh, and to have the most current information when I am out and about. Because if I can't do it over data, um, I typically do not want to connect to an unsecure Wi-Fi connection. So I always make sure that I synchronize it before I travel. And then how is, you know, kind of the organization, and I alluded to it just a second ago, really when you go into it, it is very similar to that physical binder that I mentioned, that you have sections. So on that left-hand side, the goals, the performance, all of those are the sections that are in there. Once you have highlighted a section, then you see all of the pages. And I didn't do the screenshot. When you click on the page on the far right, um, what you're going to see is all the information that is on that page once you have that page highlighted. And you're able to go ahead and search and uh, you can search a specific page. You can search only one section. You can search a whole notebook. Um, so you do have quite a few ways to do searches in the desktop app. On the web and inside of Teams, a eh, little less uh, flexibility in searching, but it still does a pretty good job finding the information that you're looking for. So one of the big things we talked about is using, you know, OneNote for your goals. 
in your organization, Microsoft automatically creates a OneNote notebook for everybody with their OneDrive. And I say within your organization, if you have a Microsoft personal account, you also get a OneNote inside of there and you can go ahead and use that one. So whether it's a personal OneNote or whether it's a company OneNote, that's your personal space to put information. And one of the things that it talk about EOS, that's all about goals. And where do you track them? You know, kind of our little thing was, do you have goals? Do you write them down anywhere? And so if you're going, hmm, I'm not sure where I put them or I have a folder or I have post-it notes all over the place, uh, this might be a good use is to go ahead and to capture those goals. You know, are they on a page, you know, in a in a binder and a physical? Are they post-it notes stuck every place? So to pay attention to that. In that template OneNote that uh, we talked about, these are some templates that you can use over and over, but you don't have to, you can just go ahead and create them. So it's just having a page that says, hey, here's my long-term goals. And right now I'm focusing on those long-term goals for work. So what are, what are your long-term goals uh, for the whole month, for the whole year, uh, for six months from now? Is it that um, you want everybody trained on uh, all the benefits and all the bells and whistles of Microsoft Teams? That might be a goal. Now that's for the whole company, not for you. So maybe you wanna pare that down for you and go, oh, if that's a company goal, mine is to actively use you know, the channel posts um, and to schedule all the meetings in channels and, you know, just really getting it down into some of those uh, the very specific um, ideas that are in here. So you definitely can add SMART goals. All this page is, is it is a table. And so uh, it has the first table. I just went and shade it, the, the row, and um, then you can go type what is your month in here. The little box is just the little to-do box. So you go and you find your tags and you insert the to-do box so that you can check them off as you complete them. And the three dots are just to let you know that's where you would type your goal. And so there's one table on top here. Um, so it's only one column wide. And then the next one is a table that is two columns wide. You could have these on one page like I have you showing here, but you could certainly go ahead and uh, set those up if you wanted those on individual pages and create that table. One of the things that I like about tables is that it helps contain that information where I love OneNote in that the page is as wide and as tall as you want. But sometimes as you're looking around or you look at the page, you're kind of like, oh, I'm not sure where to go. So when you do put those tables in there, it's very contained for you and it gives you those lines and it gives you those boundaries and those containers. So that's one option for some long-term goals. This is just another, again, it's a table that has um, a table inside of a table, as you can see. So it's a table that's two columns wide. And then inside, we've added another table. What are those steps? What are your short-term goals? So when we're looking at long-term, that's usually that, you know, that high view, that 30,000 view of what is that end goal. But when we get into the short-term goals, you'll notice that there's steps. What are those steps? And so putting those on there, what is the date that you want to complete it by? And you may want to reward yourself. If you um, complete that particular goal, what is the reward that you might give yourself or your team um, if this happens to be a team goal? I'm hoping if you have been using the Microsoft To-Do app or even Microsoft Planner, that when you look at the short-term goal, because some of these could also be turned into uh, a plan um, or put on a to-do list, because it has the steps. And so it's very similar. And so I think Microsoft has done a good job of bringing those functions and features into their applications that many of us are already utilizing in different places. So you certainly can put them on here. I kind of like to have mine separate. Probably not gonna go and create a plan with the steps on, may put it in a, a to-do, but I find on OneNote, it is crystal clear, right? It's one page I can go to and I see everything. Um, whereas you keep adding things into to-do, 
Um, there can be to do's from all sorts of different goals or tasks or projects that I'm working on. So this is a nice, crisp, clean one place, uh, one stop shop, so to speak, when you go and look at your goals. Hey, Nance, can I ask a question for clarification? Yeah. So you're saying that you can set this up like these little check boxes that these could be connected to to, to to do and planner or they can be separated. Is that the right statement? They actually cannot be connected. Um, okay. What I was commenting on is that the steps that are listed on this page that in to do and in planner, you have the ability to put a task in there and add steps. So you could create a to-do list that is just your goals. And as you list the different goals, so I have two on this page, but let's say you had four, you can put the different steps for those goals in the to-do app for yourself. Because to-do is for yourself and is not to share with others. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> All right, great question. Uh, another one is you may want to go ahead and pull what is the work that you've completed towards your goal. And so it can be some of those steps, right? Those short-term ones, or even pull that goal, the long-term goal, and what are those different steps that you have completed? And part of the reason that I set this one up is this is all about performance. Uh, I know that I have gone into companies over the years and you probably work in companies and have worked in companies that like October through January is just yucky, right? Because it's performance evaluation, performance review time. And the managers that I work with spend hours and the employees spend hours going in and having to fill out this thing. Um, and then they have to meet and they have to review it. And a lot of times it's like, oh, I forgot that I did this and did this. So if one of your, and I should have put an example in here, but let's say one of your goals for work um, was to improve your understanding of Microsoft Teams. I'm just going to keep popping back to that. And you're, you, you're hard selling today. I know I'm selling teams. I've, I've been doing a lot of teams training and I just love it. Well, it could be OneNote, could be the new Outlook. Um and so you attended a webinar and you, you know, you watch some videos on YouTube, Jen's videos um, or some others from Microsoft. And so put those in here. If you have received emails from other colleagues and, and coworkers or your manager, you know, saying, great, you, you know, I want to commend you. You've been utilizing teams um, posts. You've been really encouraging the rest of the team to get in there. Add that information. That's why you see in column three, I put comments from others. And so that you can go ahead and capture that because if it's in an email, you can copy and paste it. You can actually send it from Outlook over to here. Um, and so you can capture the whole email and get that information in one place. Now, when it comes to performance review time, you don't have to try to guess what did you do really well? What did you do to work toward that goal? you have it already captured and you've captured it throughout the year. So that's one of the other things. Um, when I have done, did consulting for a couple big uh, firms, uh, that was one of the ones that the staff was like, oh my gosh, this makes my life so much easier because then when they go into the performance review software and they evaluate themselves, they have hard data of what they did uh, toward the goals that they had set with their manager. So not only for work, right, for personal, like I said, I, I think it's absolutely great. You can do the same kind of thing. Do you have some personal short-term goals or long-term goals? They can be things about the house. They can be things about weight. They can, whatever the goals are. Um, you're trying to get your MBA. Um, you want to be an expert um, like Arnie is in SharePoint and, mm -hmm. and how to do that. So, I mean, Arnie could have filled one of these out for his EOS journey that he's gone over the last few years. Mm -hmm. What was he trying to accomplish and did he get there and what's next? This says complete by. So if you have a deadline, that's always nice. You may even want to add a column in here that says, here's my complete by. And I actually, I completed it by this date. So did you meet it or did you um, go past that date? So, you know, tweak it. And that's the nice thing with columns. You just go ahead and insert another one and you're not set 
You know, it's not, this is my format and this is what I'm stuck with. You get control of what any of these columns are called. Mm -hmm. I wanted to just show a few examples of some pages that you might want to go ahead and include. Um, so this actually would be in a section I would do called household and have one that's all about, you know, the outside stuff, the maintenance on the outside and getting, it needs to be painted and the trim needs to be painted. The garage door needs to be replaced. Uh, I would include as much information as you can here so that your OneNote notebook becomes your go-to place. If anything, uh, repairs on the house, any new things that you purchase, that you know when you bought it. So you'll notice this one is like inside um, equipment, right? Or, well, I guess maybe they're not called equipment, appliances. Um, you got a new dishwasher. When did you do it? Where did you purchase it? What is the model number? Again, right now, I just threw that in the notes column, but you certainly could create columns for each of these pieces of information. So it was very clear to identify when you do go ahead and refer back to that sheet. And the same with items that are outside. So you have your indoor appliances and your outdoor appliances, so to speak, that help you do that maintenance on your yard. And that is just so helpful. This is the one that I absolutely love because... How many of you remember, when did you get the oil change last? What was the mileage on your car? Who mm -hmm. did it? Um, what did it cost me? And if you've paid attention to what it cost to get your oil change over the last few years, I think it's doubled. Um, so, but when did you, you know, when did you replace those brakes? That's one of the things I know every once in a while, it's like, oh man, do I need my brakes yet? And who wants to go back and dig through that file folder? If you have them all in one file folder, to find out when you replace those. And so if you have multiple vehicles, go ahead and put them on here. Um, you know, and, and I like to do them each on their own page so that when I'm looking at one vehicle, I'm not distracted by anything else for that vehicle. Mm -hmm. You know, when did you purchase it and who did you purchase it from? Um, that's always nice to, to know as well. Some other fun things you can do for you personally is create pages for vacations. So if you have, you know, if there's certain vacations that you're like, oh, these are on my bucket list of places that I want to go, uh, when might be you going? Or if you, maybe you have a class reunion or a wedding or a graduation coming up, might not be this year, but maybe down the road and put that on there so that you can take a look at it. Places to visit, it might be the same thing as vacations, or maybe it's, you know, local places. There's a lot of people right now that are just staying, right, doing staycations and going, you know, a couple hours from their house so they can just go home at night. Are there friends and people that you want to reconnect with? And just have fun creating these. Here's some other things to do, you know, books to read, movies and shows to watch. I don't know about you, but I swear to goodness that every time a friend mentions a movie or a TV show, I'm like, oh, that sounds really good. But I totally forget about it. So I now have a OneNote page that when they mention it and it's mm -hmm. on my phone, I pop over there and I add it to that OneNote page so that it's not going to fall out of my head anymore. And then I just made this column, you know, it used to be just the station it was on, right? But what streaming platform might it be on? Um, because I never remember sometimes, is it a Roku or a, or a, a Hulu or, you know, Disney Plus? Where is that show that they recommend it? Hey, Nance, just a comment. That's such a good example, because a lot of times when we're coaching somebody and we look at their to-do list, so what's in like tasks, um, there's tons of stuff like books to read and different things. So it's like just filler that's kind of filling in um, the to-do list. And so it's a really good example of create a list of like, you know, books that have been recommended and put it over there. Don't fill in your to-do list with those kind of mm -hmm. random things. So great idea. Right. You certainly could keep on your to-do list, you know, review your books to read mm -hmm. um, so that it's on your to-do list and it isn't completely out of mind because sometimes when we move these things off of our to-do list onto a different page, we forget they're there initially <laughs> until it becomes a habit that we mm -hmm. reference it. And that's where I started and said, I am in OneNote every day. Um, I know Jan is in OneNote every day, too, because we utilize that um, for notes for the clients. And it's just a go-to place instead of a random, oh, where am I going to put this client note? It's like, it's a no-brainer now, isn't it, Jan? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yep. Go to OneNote, yep. go to their section, um, either add it to an existing page or create a new one with that information. So it just becomes second habit or second nature, I should say. 
Uh, and I just wanted to show a couple examples. These are in my personal uh, notebooks that I have um, some to do's, personal information, tax information, um, receipts, or I'm sorry, this is recipes. I always get those words mixed up. Don't ask me to spell them. Um, and so there's some recipes. Uh, I've had friends that have emailed me or or sent me a text with a recipe. Um, I've put some that that I love that my mom has made over the years. And instead of having to go to a recipe box, I just go to my recipe tab. And then the technology, you know, when did I buy that printer? Um, what, what are the phones that we have? Okay, so do we have our mobile phones and we have what other phones do we have in the house, right? Because there's so many voice over IP that you can have. Our router, where do you go to remember to look up all those passwords and how to reset it, right? So capturing that information, when did I get a new computer and do I still have it under warranty or, you know? Um, and so I just put everything, that's my go-to. Uh, one last quick thing here, because uh, Jan's going to kick me out here pretty soon. But there's a couple ways that you can add information. And, and if you haven't tried the uh, Web Clipper, I know you can add it to Edge, and I believe it can be added to Google. I just showed this. But the OneNote Web Clipper is just absolutely fantastic. Once you go ahead and you load it, if there's a web page that you want to put in your notebook, you're like, I want to keep this article or I want the full web page over in my OneNote notebook. You can go, you want to just take a screenshot or a part of the region and you just draw a box around it. And then you choose. So if you have multiple notebooks, you choose your location. And I just wanted to show you what it looks like. So this is the full page. So if you were to go to Jan's um, um, website, and you take a look at, this happens to be an article, How Concise Communication. This is the whole page. And I just took the top and the bottom because I couldn't fit the whole screen on here because it's her whole page, right? That is quite long, multiple scrolls through it. And it tells you what I love about it is where, when it was clipped, right? Up here, it says when it was clipped. And down here, it says, where is the path? So if I did want to get back to it, if this was actually in my OneNote notebook, I could click on it and it would take me right to that page. Now, this happens to be just the article. So this is a clipping just of the article. There's more of it. I just uh, uh, truncated it here. Mm -hmm. But again, it tells me where it comes from. And it's the full article. Because sometimes if you go ahead and you just favorite that, you go back to it and you're like, why did I want that? What was it? But now that you've put that information in your OneNote notebook and it's organized by your sections, you know why you kept it because, okay, what section was it in? And then what's the name of the page? Oh yeah, it's all about communication. So maybe you have a section communication and you have a whole bunch of, of different articles. So it's a different way rather than ripping them out of a magazine and putting them in a manila <laughs> folder in your drawer, you can go ahead and clip them from the web and put them in your OneNote notebook. And um, you also can go ahead and send your emails. And so I was mentioning this when I talked about your performance review and let's say a colleague or your manager sent you an email and said, wow, you did a really great job on this project. And this is what I really appreciated about you. And you're like, I need to make sure I save that for uh, review time. And so in the classic um, OneNote, or excuse me, Outlook, you have the option to send to OneNote. You choose your notebook, choose your section and send it. In the new, it, they buried it a little bit. I'm hoping that they finally pull it out. But this little, the, it, um, typically what you see on Microsoft is nine dots on the top left. In your email, uh, what you see in your reading pane is four dots and that's your application. So it opens the apps and then send to OneNote is there. I'm kind of hoping that they're gonna allow us to mm -hmm. add it to these different icons here, but it's not there yet. Mm -hmm. And then again, you just, when you click on that, it says, okay, what notebook do you want? You pick your notebook, you pick your section and you send it off. It makes it very easy. And so this is what an email looks like. Uh, so this was about today's webinar. And I sent that over to OneNote. And so it takes the subject of the email. It puts it the, that's the page name. You'll notice that that top information, it just pops it into a table. And this is the, the whole email that, oops, that Jan sent out. I clicked the wrong button there, sorry. This is the whole email that Jan sent out um, about today's session. 
And so it's nice and concise. And so if the email that you send over here, let's say it has you sent something, they sent something, you sent something, they sent something, all of that in that last email that you received, all of those little chunks are going to come over here into OneNote for you. Phew. Yeah, it was close, Jen. Awesome. <clears throat> no, that was fun. And I have a couple questions for you. I'm going to try to stump the presenter. So let me wrap up and then we'll come back around. I didn't know about Web Clipper. That's so cool, Nance. Um, so just a couple quick slides and then we will bring it back for Q&A. So feel free to start entering any questions you have into Q&A. And I know we have somebody on the call that's interested in understanding how to use the 365 suite of tools as a CRM. So um, feel free, maybe Nancy, you can think about how you might explain how to use OneNote in the, if you're trying to piecemeal a CRM within the Outlook suite. So a lot of people stumble upon our YouTube video and they're like, who is this company? So just a quick background. Um, we basically help companies run more efficiently and we have lots of lovers we can pull there, some with tech and some without tech. Um, but as far as our Microsoft 365 consulting services, um, we have a whole kind of roadmap that we take uh, companies through depending on where you are in your maturity with 365. It might be really setting up and doing the whole migration of getting your data over and setting up your teams and security, et cetera. We always end up in an optimized phase where we're like, okay, here's OneNote and how you wanna use it and here's Planner and here's Power BI and all the various apps within the 365 suite and helping companies understand how to use it to drive productivity. And then our intention is always to wrap up and not have companies be dependent on us. Um, I think our secret sauce is in this space. Um, we, we've, there's a million ways to do everything in Microsoft 365. The trick is for your company <clears throat> to come up with what we call rules of engagement or your operations manual on how exactly is your company going to use the suite of tools so that there's consistently consistency and understanding across the company and how to use it. And that helps obviously with adoption and compliance. Um, the way we handle training is very different. I've learned a lot from Nancy over the years on how to be really good at training. And one of the things we figured out is don't, don't just do group training, definitely do it. It's economical, but always offer one-on-one -on -one training. So we always include that in our retainer with the work we do because adoption is the biggest issue with technology. And often the adoption issue is plainly somebody doesn't want to ask an embarrassing question in a group setting and they want to have, you know, hands-on help and different things. So that's often what helps companies get over the hurdle of adoption is some one-on-one -on -one loving uh, with that person to get them there. Um, so anyway, we kind of have a whole process of how we help with adoption. Uh, just a reminder, our session for next um, next month is Microsoft 365 um, uh, Copilot. Again, how to leverage it to use it to drive productivity. So I've entered all the links back in the chat if you want to sign up for that one. And now we're open up for Q&A. So Nance, here's a question I have for you. So you always need to decide what software am I going to use and for what reason. And OneNote, you showed perfect examples of how OneNote is really good for kind of organizing information and becoming like a reference area. So like, oh, what my car maintenance stuff, like I've got information over there. So what companies often and individuals often need to decide to do is when am I using OneNote versus Word or some other sort of tool? So here's a question. One of the things I like about Word is that you can track changes. And so if multiple people are in a document and everybody's updating stuff, you can have track changes on and you can see who made what changes. Is there anything like that at all in OneNote where you can kind of make it known who said what and who made edits? Um, it's not quite the same, but yes. Yeah. So one of the things you can do is that you can turn on to show authors. So on a page, if you go up, to, uh, I don't know where it's in. Um, let me see if I can find it quick. It is in the web version. It is in view and you can show authors. If it's the desktop version, um, I believe it's in the history tab and you go there and it says show authors. And that allows you to see. So if I created the page and you went in Jan and you made some changes, I don't know 100% what change you made, but I know that you changed a line because it's going to show I edited these three lines and then you did something to the next one and I did the next one. 
The other thing that OneNote does is it keeps page versions, very similar to not track changes, but versions. So um, mm -hmm. SharePoint and OneDrive keep page versions, and so does OneNote. So you can always go to, um, and I got to find it because it's in here. It's also in the view on the web. Uh, and you say, uh, show my page versions. And it will tell you who who was the main person. Why, why is there a page with that? And so it'll say, Nancy made these changes and on this date. And then there's the current pages. So you can go back through it. So if you're finding, I had a client just, we were just talking about this and she goes, why am I getting these error messages? And so we were looking, I said, well, let's look at your page versions and see where that conflict happened. Now we would have to find out exactly what those two people were doing, who got the, who finally saved the version and who was saving it before. Because one of the things in all of the Microsoft or any collaborative software is you cannot be in the exact same spot. Word and Excel kind of lock you out, but OneNote doesn't. Um, mm -hmm. So it's paying attention to, is there somebody else's icon? Are they in there? And are they editing it as well? Um, but you can look at the page versions and you can turn on who the authors are on that page. Awesome. Thanks, Dan. Um, mm -hmm. It looks like Cynthia has a question in chat. She says, when mm -hmm. I add a section page, is there a way to have the newest add to the top? So the most current's on top. Unfortunately, if you're using the web, no. Um, if you are using the desktop, um, it's still kind of no, but it's a little easier to drag around. So in the desktop, you also, in addition to having your sections listed on the left-hand side, you also have them on the top. And so if you go to your sections on the top and you click the plus, it is going to add it at the end of it, but you can drag it around. And you can always drag your sections around and your pages around. But by default, Microsoft likes to add all the sections to the bottom and all your pages to the bottom. With your pages, if you want a page right under one, go to the page, right click on it and say, add a new page. And instead of adding to the bottom and having to drag it up, it will add that page right under the page that you're on. So awesome. I hope that answered the question. Hey, any other questions out there? Feel free to unmute yourself and ask or enter it into chat. I love using OneNote for like doctor's appointments. I always have my phone with me, my kids' doctor's appointment. So all those examples you gave, Nance, are great. I, it's just such a great tool. Yeah, I love it too. And it really, it really is about organization. It's like logically remembering, like where am I organizing certain information? And there's so many things that just fit perfectly within OneNote as a perfect place to store it. Nance, do you want to explain... Um, maybe thought any thoughts on if so if you were to use the Microsoft suite of tools as a CRM where does OneNote fit in is it just the client notes is that the main thing you do uh yes that's what I would be thinking be, I think you really want to put in your to do um app when you're going to follow up with them or even right on your calendar um, when you're going to follow up with every with the different clients uh, that you're talking with. But uh, if you don't want a true CRM system, you certainly can go ahead and create sections for each of your clients and then pages for each of your meetings. And then what I do with the client meetings that I have is I actually have a page above all my pages where I roll up all the different action items out of my meetings so that I don't have to look through 17, 25, 85 pages um, to find out what we're working on. I put it on one page right at the top. And so it's just a copy paste that's not major, but then I don't have to go back and look uh, where was that. But it, so it keeps me focused. I know what we talked about. I know what we're planning to work on and, and, and what I'm going to be talk about them with the next time. And that's very similar. I mean, I have a CRM that, um, you know, I use. It's called ACT. Um, I love it. And that was always my savior is that I put my client data in there and I would pop over there. And um, when it said, hey, call this person, it, I even put a note to myself that said, see notes. And I would go and read the notes. So before I called them, I had that memory jogger of exactly what I'm going to be calling them about. So if you use um, either your 
your calendar to put, this is the next time I'm going to call them or your to do app. Uh, this is the next time I'm going to call them. Just remember that before you make that phone call, go and look at your notes. So wherever you keep them, you could do Word documents, but it's I find it is a little more cumbersome because mm -hmm. you have to open each one of them up. I just love OneNote. You go into it. Everything's there. It really is like that binder that you put on the shelf mm -hmm. um, where Word documents, typically people have, you know, a hundred different pages, Word documents. And you're like, is it this one? Is it this one? Mm -hmm. And so it's kind of like Easter egg hunting. And who wants <laughs> do that all the time uh, it, in one note you can just search and you can find the information so succinctly perfect so, one way i would do it awesome nance well we are out of time so we'll go ahead and wrap up thanks everybody for being on the call we appreciate it please reach out to to me if you have questions about our services or anything with 365 we're happy to to schedule some time and answer some questions so awesome job as always nance thank you